Well, if there's a person who knows a thing or two about competing on the world stage in the pool, it's our next guest, Brittany McLean. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. So let's get right into it. Historically, at the Commonwealth Games, stars seem to be born there. They kind of go to the Commonwealth Games. Not a lot of people know exactly who they are, and they either break a world record, win a couple gold medals, and now they're household names. Not the case with Summer McIntosh, is it? I mean, she has set herself up as a household name going into these games, but that also comes with a lot of expectations. Can it, she handle it? It does, yeah. but I think the fun thing about comparing Summer is that you can look at it from two ways. One way, yes, she's a household name. We've all heard about her recently. She lit up the pool at the Olympics and then again at World Championships. Yeah. But at the same time, she's still only in her second season <laughs> on the national team. So this is her first Commonwealth Games. Other than the Olympics, it's her first time, you know, going to a competition where she's meeting different athletes from different sports. And with COVID hopefully providing a little less restriction, um, they might get to actually meet other teammates and do other things. So this is still a stepping stone in her career and it is just the beginning in another sense. It's weird to think that, isn't it? Just given the success that she's had, but I'll just ask you that right now. What would be a successful Commonwealth Games for Summer McIntosh? Oh, I think coming off world championships, like the limits are truly endless. Um, she has an unbelievable ability to stand up under pressure to act with such maturity for an athlete that is so young. Like watching her on the pool deck, the way she reacts to things that may not necessarily always go her way or having to compete in multiple events over multiple days, but she does it with such ease. And so I'm so impressed with the maturity she has at the age she has it. And again, this is another chance to race, another chance to do something that's never been done. Every time we see her race so far, she's improved, she's gone faster. She's set new standards in the sport of swimming. Um, and I think Commonwealth will be a fun new challenge for her. I can expect, I would imagine each of her individual events, she'd be, if not a podium expectation, a, a, a gold medal threat. Um, that's the, She'll be doing the 400 individual medley, the 400 freestyle and the 200 butterfly. Uh, but then Canada can play around with the relays too. We've lost a little bit of depth in, in Penny Alexiak not being there. Uh, Taylor Ruck is also not going to be in attendance. So. The relays, they might have some fun with the girls, switch up their orders, see where their, their strengths are. So she might get a, a couple more medals there too. Okay, you got my next question right there. You mentioned some of the absences. Some of the bigger names not going to be there. So if Canadians are watching the Commonwealth Games, they're watching mm -hmm. swimming, who might be the next breakout star that comes out of these games? Well, definitely after Worlds, I have to mention Josh Leando. He was so strong. And again, a youngster, he's still 19. Um, for a man to be a sprinter at that age is massive. That is a huge level of success. He's also his biggest rival, Caleb Dressel. The Americans aren't at this competition. So it'll be kind of fun to see how he competes against the Aussies and some other countries, maybe some different names that weren't at world championships, but definitely fuel af after worlds to swim so well, so strong, to have another man on the Canadian national team that we're talking about, right? Yeah. It's been this story of the women's success, but to see someone step up and say, I want to be a leader too. I want the storyline to be about me. So not necessarily a new name, but I think one you have to remember he's there. Last one. How does the future of Swimming Canada look right now? You're looking at it now. What's it going to look like five years, 10 years from now? Oh, a great question. I'm really excited. I think since the Rio 2016 games is when this sport was put on the map in terms of Canadian success. I remember in 2012 being at those Olympics and we actually had two male medals, not we only had about three female finalists. So that's now 10 years ago. We only had three finalists. And, and now looking here 10 years later, and we're expecting, you know, six, seven, eight, nine medals at every World Championships, Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games. Um, and I, I think sometimes we forget that. Like, we're not that far away from a, a totally different world of swimming in Canada. And to see the growth that I've seen is so exciting. But to see the success be so young right now. Like we still have, the household name is Penny Lexiak and she's only still, what, 21, <laughs> 22 years old, she's right? She's a baby, she's yeah. a baby, yeah. And, but then with Summer being, you know, only 15, 16, I think that's so exciting to have a leader on the team be a young teen and to see Josh Sando and see so many of these other names, to be able to know that that's where our future is headed makes me really excited. I think the, the balance is always a really great, um, experience mixed with that fresh energy. And that's what the team is holding right now. And that means we get to keep inviting you back because the future looks very bright <laughs> for Swimming Canada. Brittany, thanks so much for doing this. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.